The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 4 and 20, Paul's letter to the Corinthians, he says, For the kingdom of God, say that with me, for the kingdom of God is not just a lot of talk. It is living by God's power. You may be seated. The kingdom of God is not just a lot of talk, but it's living by God's power. How many of you know we should live by God's power? How many of you know that everybody should have their own encounter with God's power? How many of you have encountered the power of God? Can I see your hand? You're never the same when you encounter the power of God. You're not an addict anymore when you encounter the power of God. You're not tormented by your past when you encounter the power of God. You refuse to settle for second best when you truly encounter the genuine power of God. Everywhere Jesus went, he demonstrated the power of God. The Bible says he went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, the Holy Ghost. Everybody say the Holy Ghost. He, the Bible says he was anointed with the Holy Ghost and power. He went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Can you say amen? The Bible says throughout the Gospels that Jesus came teaching, preaching, and demonstrating the gospel of the kingdom. And everywhere he went, he healed all manner of disease. Can you say amen? This should be no different today, those of us that have the power of God. We are called to do the works of God, even greater works because of greater power that abides on the inside of us. Somebody clap your hands if you know it's true. If you've not encountered the power of God, today you will. Today may be the first time that somebody encounters the power of God. Today may be the first day for the rest of your life that everything begins to change. Your body's going to change today. God's going to heal you. Healing's getting ready to manifest in your life. Strength is coming into your body. Come on, somebody say amen. Peace is going to fill your mind. Somebody shall provision. Peace, protection, provision. God's power. Paul said the kingdom of God does not operate by a lot of talk. There's a lot of people, they have a lot of talk, but there's no power. They can preach, but there's no power. They can teach, but there's no power. But when you've got the power of God on the inside, you don't just talk it, you demonstrate it. Amen. Today's a day of divine demonstration. Hallelujah. Today's a day that God is going to activate the supernatural and the miraculous in this place. I don't know what you came here today dealing with, but this one thing I know, after much prayer over the last three days, that something unusual is getting ready to happen in your life, in your family, by the end of this year. The rest of you that don't receive it, amen. I don't know why you're here. But if you receive it, raise your hands right now and receive it by faith. By the end of this year, you will encounter God's power. You will encounter peace, provision, and like never before. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Paul said the kingdom of God does not exist by a lot of talk. He says, but it exists by living by God's power. Everyone should experience God's power. Everyone in this room today, if you choose to, you can experience God's power. Everybody here today can experience the same thing. Some will, some may not, because what we focus on. What you focus on will determine what you receive. The level of your expectation will determine the level of your experience in this service today. I believe in miracles. How many of you believe in miracles today? If you believe in miracles, let me see your hand. How many of you know you are a miracle? You are a walking, talking, breathing miracle. Can you say amen? amen? If you've ever been healed, jump to your feet and give God praise. If you've ever been delivered, open up your mouth and glorify the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter number 2 verse 4 and 5. He says, I come unto you not with enticing plausible words of man's wisdom. But I come unto you of the demonstration of the spirit and of power. That your faith would not rest, reside in the wisdom or the intellect of a man. But your faith would reside in the power of God. I want to talk to every one of you today. You cannot live off my encounter with God. You cannot live off your mother's encounter with God. But every generation needs to have their own encounter with God. Abraham had an encounter with God. But there had to come a day that Isaac had to encounter, have his own encounter with God. Somebody shout hallelujah. You will not make heaven because of your father's encounter. 
You will not make heaven because your mother was a prayer warrior. You will make heaven because you had your own genuine, divine, supernatural encounter with God. Is anybody glad you're alive and in the house of God? Can somebody shout aloud, hallelujah, to live a fulfilled life, to live a satisfied, fulfilled life. You have to live a life by God's power. God's power is greater than any difficulty. God's power is greater than any problem. God's power is greater than your pain. Somebody shout hallelujah. Tell somebody you have to encounter God for yourself. In the book of Judges it says there was another generation that arose that knew not God nor his power. We are on the verge of this today in the modern church. Just because you go to church every week, just because you're a religious person, does not mean you have encountered the raw power of Almighty God. How many of you are glad today that you have experienced the genuine encounter by the power of God? Somebody shout amen. We have the Holy Ghost for power. When you have the Holy Ghost, you have power over demonic opposition. When you have the power of the Holy Ghost, you understand you have power because of that encounter to be an effective witness. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, I'm going to lay a foundation and then I'm going to lay hands on people today. And if you believe what I believe, you will be healed in Jesus' name. Three people said amen. I'm waiting for the rest of you to clap your hands and shout, I will have an encounter with God's power today. Somebody lift your voice and shout and care less what anybody thinks about you. Power is for a witness. In Acts 1 and 8, it says, you shall receive power. That word in the Amplified, you read that scripture, it says you have received ability, efficiency, and might when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. So you have power to be a witness. Somebody say amen. And then the other purpose of God's power is that you might demonstrate his glory, that God would receive glory, that you would not take credit for what God has done, but everything that God uses you to do and accomplish on this planet earth in the kingdom of God, it is for the purpose of bringing him glory. Somebody shout hallelujah. The other purpose of the Holy Ghost and that power is that you can receive strength in times of difficulty times that you will go through times of trials and testing times and seasons of discouragement but the Holy Ghost will give you strength in times of testing can somebody shout praise the Lord everything that God created he created it for the purpose of bringing his name glory can we give him glory that's why you're alive and that's why he created you open up your mouth and give him glory Open up your mouth and give him praise. Come on, you could do better than that. Some of you, I know your story. You should open up your mouth and give him glory right now. So we understand that he's given us power to be a witness. Power. He's given us his spirit. We've encountered his power. We've been transformed by his power. You're not the same person you used to be when you encounter the power and the glory of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. When you experience the power of God, there is transformation. Say that with me. Power produces transformation. When you experience and encounter the power of God, you, you are not bound by addiction anymore. When you encounter the power of God and you experience the supernatural raw presence of God, you are not living in sin anymore. Because when you encounter God, you encounter his power. You encounter his person and his person is holy. Everybody shout hallelujah. When you encounter God's power, there is a transformation that takes place. You're not the person you used to be you're not my God you understand you're not yet who you're gonna be but when you encounter the power of the Lord you have been changed how many of you been changed you're a new creature in Christ clap those blessed hands clap your blessed hands if you're a new creature in Christ the old is gone and the new has come I'm not the person I used to be because I encountered Jesus Christ somebody shout amen clap your hands and shout praise the Lord. There are people that need miracles in their life. What is a miracle? A miracle is an extraordinary event taken as a divine sign of God's intervention in human affairs. A miracle is the manifestation of the glory of God designed to bring honor to his name. A divine encounter terminates demonic affliction. A divine encounter solves every issue and problem, transforms your life in a way that cannot be explained.
explained by any known natural law like the parting of the Red Sea. When God performed a miracle and made a way of escape for his ancient people. Three million people passed through a Red Sea on dry ground, like raising Lazarus from the dead, like bringing water out of a rock, like an old woman conceiving and delivering a child at the age of 90, like a virgin Mary to conceive and deliver a healthy baby. Baby, somebody is going to experience the encounter with with the power of God today. Can somebody shout aloud hallelujah right now. Tell somebody you're going to have an encounter with God today. Miracles demonstrate the love of God for mankind. They display his power. They confirm the reality of his existence. They strengthen the faith of all believers. Produces faith in unbelievers and demonstrates God's sovereignty. Somebody shout aloud hallelujah miracles can happen anywhere at any time but there are some environments that hinder or prevent or inhibit the power of God somebody said well pastor I can get a miracle at home that's true but there are certain environments and atmospheres that either enhance or inhibit the presence and the anointing of God somebody shout aloud hallelujah but I learned something that we're too or three and Matthew 18 are gathered together in my name there I am in the midst of them tell somebody you got to get back to church tell somebody online text somebody in the comments say it's time to get back to church in Luke chapter 13 there was a woman I feel it coming on now in Luke chapter 13 there was a woman there was a woman that was bound by a demon spirit of infirmity for 18 years. Everybody shout 18 years too long. How many of you have been dealing with an issue in your family for many years? Can I see your hand? You've been dealing with an issue in your health for many years. Can I see your hand? It's too long. The time has come. The moment has arrived. The day has dawned for a miracle to happen in your life. And this is what I know. When you begin to join your faith and you begin to brag on God he will show up in a mighty way. Somebody shout hallelujah. I need to find somebody in this room that I can lock faith with. Can I find somebody that will join their faith with me today? If you believe we still serve a God of power, a God of miracles, a God of great glory, raise your voice and shout today, I'm going to have an encounter. That shame, that insecurity, that fear, fear, that guilt, that infirmity, that sickness is leaving your life today. Because healing is coming in. And when healing comes in, sickness has to go. When faith comes into your heart, fear has got to leave. Somebody shout aloud, hallelujah. And the Bible says there was a woman in Luke chapter 13, which had an oppressing, tormenting devil for 18 years everybody shout 18 years too long the bible says she did not allow her problem to keep her from coming to church the bible says in spite of 18 years how many of you know after 18 years she must have been discouraged i know i probably would have been if i'm honest 18 years but she kept coming to church she kept showing up she could have been discouraged but she she kept coming. She could have been bound and allow the oppression to keep her in her home. Allowed her sickness to hold her down in the bed. But she said, I'm going to keep coming. Read your Bible in Luke 13. It was in the, it was, the Bible says, it was in the tabernacle, the temple. This woman kept coming. Everybody said, I got to keep coming. No matter how discouraged I am, no matter how I feel, I'm going to keep coming to church. I'm not going to forsake the assembling of myself together in this last hour we've got to keep coming some of you you need to get you need to take an inventory because you're getting bored with the move of the Holy Ghost but I'm going to tell you today every 
one that's hungry. You shall be filled and you shall be delivered and you shall be blessed today in Jesus' name. Somebody shout, she kept coming and she was healed and Jesus said to the woman, woman, thou art loosed. Everybody shout hallelujah. T.D. Jakes did not coin that. Jesus coined that. Woman, thou art loosed from thine affliction. Tell somebody, be thou loosed. Touch somebody on the shoulder. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Somebody said, when is God going to move for me? When you learn to move for somebody else, why don't you encourage somebody? Why don't you participate with somebody else's miracle? Why don't you tell somebody next to you? Tell somebody, tell somebody, be thou loosed. Jesus said, woman, thou art loosed. Bowed over in pain for 18 years. My God, can I get some help? The Bible says that Jesus said, woman, thou art loosed. And immediately, the woman that could not stand up straight was healed completely by the power of God. I don't know about you. Maybe you think I'm foolish. Maybe you think I've lost my mind. You got that right. I put on the mind of Christ. I've been set free. And I still have have the kind of faith that believes that somebody in this room can receive a miracle today. Does anybody got that kind of faith? I need somebody that will agree with me right now for a miracle in your life. Somebody shout, today's my day. Everybody shout, I'm being loosed. I'm being set free. I'm going to be healed because I'm going to keep coming to church. Tell somebody, keep coming to church. The enemy will do everything in his power to keep you from coming to church. Have you ever noticed? Everything's good all day long. Getting ready to come to church. Door craps on the kitchen floor. Everything that could go wrong goes wrong. You get ready to go to church. You get a phone call. See, the enemy has a conspiracy of interruptions that he has assigned to distract you from coming to the house of God. The enemy will do everything in his power to keep you from coming to church. Some of you watching online, he succeeded again. He kept you home. And I'm telling you right now, that comes a time, no matter how you feel, no matter what you're going through, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Tell somebody, I'm glad to be in the house today. Now maybe you got to fake it, put a smile on your face. Maybe a little lethargic like me. You had a little too much turkey. But I come to tell you today, you got to shake it off. And you got to put on the garment of praise. You can praise your way out of anything. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Woman, thou art loosed. The encounter that transformed Hannah's life, it did not happen at her home. It happened at Shiloh, at church. Somebody shout hallelujah. Everybody shout, we're going to have an encounter today at church. Oh, hallelujah. Well, I never heard a preacher like this before. That's because you've been going to some cemetery with a church name over its door. But I'm here to tell you that the power of God is in this place. From the day my mother and father opened the doors till this moment, the power of God is in this house. Somebody shout hallelujah. Tell somebody I'm going to stay in church no matter how I feel no matter what it looks like the doctor may have said you're gonna die but you gotta keep coming to church you gotta keep coming to church because there are some atmospheres that are conducive to your miracle and if you're ready to encounter the power you gotta shout right now shout I said shout Hannah's life was transformed at Shiloh everybody shout Shiloh at church not at home not at home at Shiloh the man with the paralyzed hand in Mark chapter 3 he did not receive his miracle 
at home, but Jesus healed him in the synagogue. Everybody shout, miracles still happen at church. Tell somebody, there's a place where miracles happen. Somebody shout for your wife. Somebody shout for your sons and daughters. Somebody shout aloud, hallelujah. In Acts chapter 3, there was a man that was carried daily at the gate called Beautiful to beg alms because his sickness had reduced him to poverty. His situation took a turn for the worse. But in Acts chapter number 3, I feel a preaching spirit right now in my spirit. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says Peter and John were on their way to pray. You better listen to me in the same section over here. Those of you in this room, those that are watching me right now in California, there's a miracle getting ready to hit your house by the end of this message. I feel something right now. Open up your mouth and shall miracles still happen. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. His power remains the same. What he did then, he's doing now. What he's doing now, he'll be doing tomorrow. Because my God does not change. Because you're depressed and you're moody and you're up and down like a yo-yo in your emotions does not mean God is like you. God remains the same. He sits high, but when we call, he swoops low. Somebody shout aloud, hallelujah right now. The man with the paralyzed hand was healed in the synagogue. Everybody shout, not at home. Somebody shout, not at home. The man at the gate called Beautiful, he was on the property of the church and he was healed when Peter and John said silver and gold have I none but such as I have unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk tell somebody rise up and walk oh you may not be paralyzed but some of you are down in your mind some of you are down in your emotion rise up and walk somebody's laying in the bed watching me right now rise up and walk in the name of Jesus does any still body still believe that we can encounter God's power somebody clap your hands and shout aloud hallelujah when you encounter his power my God you keep coming back for another drink when the doors are open you're here midweek you're not home midweek you're in church because you believe that every time we gather together in his name there he will be in our midst can somebody shout hallelujah I said can somebody shout hallelujah this is what I've learned God does not bless the selfish God does not bless the self-centered but God blesses those come on somebody that are dependent upon his power and surrender to him God does not bless those that are self-reliant but God blesses those that are dependent on his power. I'm going to say it again. God does not bless those that are self-reliant, but those that are dependent on his power. Before I ever walk out on this platform, I say, God, today's another day. I can't do this without you. Let me give you an example. God's hand was on Moses' life to be the great deliverer for his ancient people, Israel. But Moses said something to Yara. He says, I will not take one step from this place unless your presence goes with me. I can't do this without God. I can't go anywhere without God. Some of you, that's why you're frustrated and that's why you're still in want and that's why you're still struggling in your finances because you think you can do it in your own strength. I'm telling you right now, I can't do it without God. But when I include God in the equation of my life, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Somebody shout hallelujah you better get ready baby your eyes haven't seen and your ears haven't heard neither has it entered into your heart all that God has prepared if you love them leap out of your seat and shout today's my day for an encounter God wants to use you but you cannot live without his power in Ephesians 3:20. Now all glory to God. Give him glory. Inhale. 
strength. Exhale, victory. Huh? Some of you look like a cow looking at a new gate. Open up your mouth. I said, inhale, strength. Exhale, victory. Tell somebody, I can't live without his power. God begins to bless people and they think they can remove God from the equation. That's the greatest temptation. Not when you're down, not when everything's going wrong, but when God is blessing your life like never before. He gives you a new home, now you forget him. You come to church when it's convenient. You worship God when it's easy, but there's no blessing to worship God when it's easy. How can you worship when your son like Isaac is laying on an altar called Mount Moriah when God asks you for your best? Somebody shout aloud, hallelujah. Listen to what Paul said. He said, now all glory to God. Somebody give him glory. If you really believe without him you're nothing, give him glory. From the front row to the last row, from the left to the center to the circumference, give him glory. All over this room, I want everybody on your feet and to give him 30 seconds of glory. Give him 30 seconds of glory. Stop taking the credit and stop praising when you feel like it. Praise him no matter how you feel. Slap somebody a high five. Say, today's your day for an encounter with God. It's been a long time. In Ephesians 3.20. Now all glory to God. Everybody say all glory to God. When, when you understand that God gets all the glory and without him you have nothing. You have no problem obeying him when he speaks. All glory to God. My God. Somebody right now is in the hospital. Somebody just got a bad report. They don't even know what's wrong with you. But the God does. God breathed life into you. God is healing you right now. Ephesians 3.20. Somebody just got a miracle. Clap your hands. See, when the doctors are trying to figure it out, God's already worked it out. Oh God, I feel a shout. Paul said, now all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within us. Say his power is at work within me. Right now, you may not see it, but God's working in you right now to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Just because you don't see him working does not mean that God is not moving right now. The power is working in me. Everybody say, there's power working in me. How many of you understand the power that raised Christ from the dead it dwells in you? So even though you have a down day, you don't stay down. How can you stay down when resurrection power lives on the inside of you? The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead it dwells in you and it shall quicken your mortal body by his spirit. Somebody shout amen. You can't stay defeated when you've got the Holy Spirit. You cannot stay discouraged when you've got the Holy Spirit. He said, I'll give you joy. My God, that is unspeakable and full of glory. Somebody shout hallelujah. Nehemiah said, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Tell somebody you got resurrection power on the inside of you. And some of you right now, you need to listen to me right now. You're believing for a miracle in somebody that is close to your heart right now. And I'm here to tell you, it looks like it's gotten worse instead of better. But they cannot die before their time. And when that spirit that raised Christ from the dead, it dwells in them. If it's not their time, they're going to stay alive. <laughs> Say, Pastor, how do I experience? How do, how do I encounter God's power in my life? There, 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 there's four main ways that you encounter God's power. Number one, you encounter God's power by prayer. Everybody shout by prayer. By prayer. How many of you believe that the power comes through prayer? Amen. How many of you have the Holy Spirit? You have prayer power. And if you're not experiencing power, it's because you're not praying. If you're not experiencing God's power, you're not praying. Praying is not praying when trouble comes. But it is a daily walk with God. Somebody say amen. amen. Everybody say prayer and power go together. The second thing that happens, the second way you encounter God's power is by obeying God. God will not bless disobedience. I don't care what your favorite Facebook preacher tells you. God will not bless a lifestyle of disobedience or sin. The power of God. You will encounter the power of God. Everybody say by obedience. 
when you do what God tells you to do. Even when it's difficult, even when it's unpopular, even when it's the hard thing to do, even when it may cost you, even when it doesn't make sense, even when nobody else is doing it, God will pour his power out in your life. The third way you encounter God's power is by refusing to give up. Say that with me. I refuse to give up. Tell somebody, please don't give up. Tell somebody your future is too blessed for you to quit now tell somebody on the other side say don't give up the fourth way you encounter God's power is by faith everybody say by faith everybody say by faith in order for your faith to grow your faith will be tested say amen when you're dealing with difficulty or delays or dead ends God is teaching you to trust him and if you don't quit God will bless you Go with me to 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 5. Before Pastor Liz comes in a few moments to lead us in Holy Communion. 1 Peter 1 5, it says, through your faith. Tell somebody, through your faith. Peter said, through your faith, God is protecting you by his power. Never read it like this before in this translation. And it is through your faith that God is protecting you by his power. Say, I'm protected by God's power. Until you receive this salvation. The word protect in 1 Peter 1, 5, in 1 Peter 1, 5 means to garrison. Everybody say garrison. It is a military term that refers to sending soldiers to a town in order to protect it. They garrison, the soldiers garrison, they protect the town. Staying there to watch over it, to guard it. In the same way, we are continually guarded by God. We are continually guarded by God. Let me say that again. We are continually giving praise and thanksgiving. We are praying. Come on, we are continually guarded by God. Not only are we continually guarded by God's power, but he says, I've assigned angels. Say, I have angels on assignment. Say, there are angels on assignment for my life. He said, I'll keep you in perfect peace if your mind stayed on me. He said, the angels of the Lord surround those that fear me. Come on, somebody. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. He said, I'll give angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. Psalm 91. Can somebody shout aloud hallelujah. I don't know what you're going through, but you are about to encounter God's power. I don't know what you're dealing with. It's not hopeless. You're not helpless. You're not powerless. You have the power of God in your life today. Clap your hands and shout aloud, amen. Go with me to Ephesians 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Paul said, also I pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe. This is the same, everybody say the same mighty power. Who has this? Who has this power in them today? All believers. Everybody say the same power. The same mighty power that raised Jesus from the dead. It dwells in every one of you. Every one of you. The same mighty power. Oh, Pastor, I'm so discouraged. The same mighty power. The same mighty power that raised to life again. The three day dead body of our prince of God. It lives in you. Tell somebody it lives in you. So why don't you start acting like it and start living like it. That power lives in you. Same mighty power, I'm so discouraged, I'm so sick, I'm so dis I'm defeated, I'm depressed. The same mighty power of God lives in you. You don't know who you are, that's the problem. You really don't. You, 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 you really don't. I don't care how long you're coming to this church. 
how much you read your Bible every day. I don't care how many scriptures you memorize. I don't care if you're a teacher in this church. If you are defeated and always discouraged, you don't know the power you possess. Depression doesn't dominate in the life of a believer. Fear doesn't dominate in the life of a believer. Depression doesn't stop you. Discouragement doesn't hold you back. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. I feel it strong right now. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Oh, really? Live it in sin? Practicing perversion and you're nodding your head at me? Some of you are borderlining a reprobate spirit when you could say amen and hallelujah and you're living a life that is contrary to this Bible. The same spirit. Shout it out. I got the same spirit. Not a twin spirit. Not a like spirit. The same spirit. Oh my God, I feel this. The same spirit, Pastor Chuck. The same spirit. Don't have sympathy for people that don't want better for their life. Don't have sympathy for people. That's not compassion. Lay hands on them. Tell them, shake off your depression and shake off your fear and put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. It is impossible for you to know as much Bible as you know and stay discouraged. Big difference between being spirit-filled and being emotion-controlled. The same mighty power, shout the same mighty power. I can't get away from this. That raised Christ from the dead and seated him in heaven at the place of honor at God's right hand in heavenly realms. Now he, Jesus, is far above any rule or authority or power or leader or anything. Don't miss this. Not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things, all things. Say all things. Say all things. Say all things. God has put all things under the authority of Christ. And has made him head over all things. For what benefit? For the benefit of the church. Fear is under my feet. Depression is under my feet. Poverty is under my feet. Discouragement is under my feet. Somebody shout hallelujah. Lust is under your feet. Temptation is under your feet. If you've got the Holy Ghost, don't tell me that you cannot help it. You continually fall into sin. No, with every temptation, when you've got the Holy Ghost and you understand your authority, he makes a way of escape. The same spirit. Powerful. 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 Same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. It dwells in me. So how can I stay defeated if it dwells in me? How can I stay depressed if that spirit lives in me? See, people have it here, but they don't have it here. People have information, but they don't have revelation. When you have information, it produces revelation and leads to transformation. Say the same spirit. <laughs> the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. It dwells in me today. So when I lay hands on people, it's not my hand that heals. It's the hand of God that's going to heal you through me. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. In my name you shall cast out devils. 
I've given you authority. I've given you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. I've given you power over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means be able to hurt you. Five things I want you to know before we go. That God chose you before you chose him. Peter tells us, you were chosen according to the purpose of God. First Peter 1, 2. Everybody say, I was chosen according to the purpose of God. And the God the, uh, the Father and were made, oh, uh, where's my scriptures? Were made a holy people by his spirit. First Peter 1, 2. GNT translation, you are made a holy people by his spirit to obey Jesus Christ. Say, I was chosen for a purpose to obey Jesus Christ. I was chosen by God to live holy by his spirit to obey Jesus and be purified. Here it is, by his blood. The next thing I want you to know, family, is this. God always treats you with mercy. As a believer, God always treats you with mercy. We are not like the wicked that are destined under judgment and wrath. But we have been grafted into the kingdom of God. We are citizens of the greatest kingdom on the earth. Clap your hands if you understand. You've been chosen. You are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a peculiar people. Somebody clap your hands if you know who you are. If you clap your hands if you're glad God chose you before you ever said yes to him. Watch this. God treats us with mercy. All honor to God. 1 Peter 1, 3, the living Bible, all honor to God, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for it is the boundless mercy that has given us the privilege of being born again so that we are now members of God's own family. What a privilege. What a privilege. Don't become familiar with God. It's a privilege to be able to come into his presence. All honor to be to God, the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, for his boundless mercy that was given us the privilege of being born again so that we are now members of God's own family. The more we understand God's grace, God's real grace, the real grace of God, not fake grace, the more we understand the grace of God, the more it amazes us. Because it's completely undeserved. And it is completely unmerited. Somebody shout Amen. Number three, God has secured your future. Tell somebody, God has secured your future. If you're a believer, let me see your hand. You're a believer, God has secured your future. God has secured your future. The Bible says, the Bible says, if you're a believer, you do not have to worry about your eternal destiny because it is secure in Christ. Can somebody celebrate in the house of God? It doesn't matter what changes in this world. My God, your eternity will never shift. Your eternity will never change. If you're a child of God, for Peter said, now we live in the hope of eternal life because Christ rose again from the dead. And God has reserved for his children the priceless gift of eternal life. It is kept in heaven for you, for you. It is kept in heaven for you. It is pure and undefiled beyond the reach of change and decay. You and I that are believers that are living the Christian life, that are walking in holiness, we all have a reservation in heaven that can never be canceled. Amen. Clap your hands if you're glad you have a reservation in heaven that will never be canceled. I'm talking to believers. I'm talking to real Christians today. Your eternity is secure in Christ. The devil cannot rob eternal life from you. Clap your hands and shout aloud. Hallelujah. Clap your hands and give God praise. 
God, power will protect you. God's power will protect you. God's power will protect you. I don't care what happens in this world. God's power will protect each and every one of you. Say that with me. God's power will protect me. Paul, Peter said in 1 Peter 1, he says, through your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive this salvation, which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. The last thing I want to say to you is this. God has been preparing you and me in this life for eternity. When you really understand this principle, this truth, it'll change everything about how you deal with difficulty. Because God is using everything in our lives. Say that with me. God is using everything in our lives. Say, God is using everything in my life. See, what people call faith, I call phony. God is using everything in your life. Faith does not ignore life. Faith gives you the ability to deal with life. Faith does not ignore trouble. It shows you how to deal with it. Pastor, I have $500,000 in debt. I just ignore it. That's not faith. That's a fool. Are you listening to me? God is preparing you for eternity. God is using your trial and your tests to prepare you for eternity. He uses the good. He uses the bad. And he even uses the ugly. To prepare you for eternal life. How many of you got faith in God today? Can I see your hand? Don't put your faith in government. Don't put your faith in a political leader. Don't put your faith in a man. Put your faith in the creator of man. Somebody shout hallelujah. The trial of your faith. Being much more precious than gold that is tried with fire. Might be found unto praise. Unto praise, unto praise, unto honor, unto the glory of God. Somebody shout aloud, hallelujah. Trials show you that your faith is genuine, the Bible says. It is tested as fire tests and purifies gold. It is though your faith is more precious than mere gold. Somebody shout aloud, hallelujah, in the house of God. Today's your day. Today's your day for a divine encounter with God. Every head bowed and every eye closed. You're here this morning. You're watching me this morning. You say, Pastor, I'm lost. I'm backslidden. There was a time I was on fire, but I lost it. There was a time I was hungry for God, but I no longer have a desire or an appetite for him. Let me tell you how you know you don't have an appetite for God. You no longer have a desire to come to church. David said, my greatest desire is to see your power and your glory to manifest in the sanctuary. There are people watching me online who say, Pastor, there's sin in my life. I need to repent, and I want to do it now. I want to get rid of it before it gets rid of me. I want to deal with this sin before the devil destroys me. Right now online, right now, bring me that camera close. Right now, you're watching me. There's sin in your life. All you have to do online is say, Jesus Come into my heart. I repent. Forgive me of all my sins. I'm sorry. And then you, at that moment, if you pray that prayer in sincerity of heart and receive the truth, you're saved. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Never to be removed. Somebody shout hallelujah. As your head is bowed in this room, your eyes are closed. Say, Pastor, I need to confess my sin. I need to repent. Rebellion is a sin. When somebody gives you an instruction in spiritual authority and you don't do it, that's rebellion. That's a sin. Unforgiveness is a sin. Resentment is a sin. Lust is a sin. Pride is a great sin. God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. You're in this room and you say, I need to encounter the power of God.
I need to be saved. I need to be delivered. I need to experience Christ for real. I want to know his genuine love and power. I want to experience his amazing grace. If that's you, I want you to lift your hand when I count to three. When I count to three, three will be your signal. And lifting your hand will be the sign that you want Christ in your life. One, two, three. Throw your hand in the air. You say, Pastor, there's sin in my life. I need to be forgiven. Let me tell you something. Religious people do not go to heaven. Saved people go to heaven. Good people don't go to heaven. Saved people go to heaven. Somebody said, well, pastor, I've gone to church my whole life. The Bible says this. The only way you're saved is to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. To call upon the name of the Lord. The Bible says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. In this room, is there anybody here today who say, I need to be saved? There's sin in my life. I need to be forgiven. I want to get rid of this once and for all. When you encounter the power of God, you're never the same again. Anybody at all, lift your hand all over this room. I see those hands. I see those hands. I see those hands. I see that hand. Anyone else? I see that hand. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Before we receive Holy Communion, do not take Holy Communion with sin in your life. Do not take Holy Communion with sin in your life. You are bringing judgment upon yourself when you dishonor the Lord's table. The Bible says many die prematurely because they don't discern the Lord's body rightly. If there's sin in your life, confess it now. Repent of it. Turn away from it. If that's your heart's desire. Anybody else for the last time? Say, Pastor, there's sin in my life. When you repent, that means you have the intention of never committing the sin again. You don't repent sin on Sunday, repent of sin on Sunday, commit the same sin on Monday. That's not genuine repentance. Repentance means I was headed in this direction, now I'm headed in a completely different direction. Anyone else before I pray? Hold those hands up again all over the room. All over the room. I'm going to ask you just stand where you are. Just stand right there. Just stand up. Stand up. Stand up. I'm not going to ask you to come. I'm going to ask you to stand right where you are today. Stand right where you are. Anyone else you put up your hand, stand. Stand. There are others you put up your hand. Stand. It takes a real man, a real woman, a real young person. It takes courage to stand in a room full of people. Anyone else, stand. Everybody bow your head. Those that are standing, bow your head and say, today, Lord Jesus. Say it today, Lord Jesus. I come to you. I repent of every sin that has separated me from you. Cleanse me now by your precious blood. Today I receive the free gift of eternal life. I am now saved. I am now washed in the blood. I am now clean. Today's my day for a brand new life, a brand new beginning. Now use your authority as a believer now and say, devil, I bind you. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Take your hands off my life. Take your hands off my family. Take your hands off my mind. Take your hands off my health. My finances, I no longer belong to you. Today I declare before hell, before heaven and earth, I'm saved. I am a child of the living God. Everybody clap your hands all over this room and those online. If you prayed that prayer, watching me online, contact us. We would love to connect with you as soon as possible.